Good evening, good evening. Welcome once again for our Tuesday evening uh, study, Bible study. Again, uh, God is faithful in keeping us, for that we are truly grateful. It is my prayer that you would be blessed through this teaching today. Let us pray. Turn to our Father, we thank you once again for your homes of protection, your grace, and your mercy for extending our days a little longer to be a witness to you. Pray that you would touch the hearers in a very special way, that they be blessed through your word in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> it is a great joy that we come tonight again on uh, last Tuesday we talked about the post uh, Pentecostal church and uh, we dealt with the uh, what happened after Pentecost and on Sunday morning we talked about uh, Pentecost amen and so uh, we talked last week about uh, the events of the church how the results of Pentecost and six traits that the early church had. Yeah. And tonight I want to advance that thought a little more mm -hmm. about the post-Pentecostal Pentecostal church, or Pentecost, or post-Pentecost, that's what I'm saying. Uh, chapter two, verses one, beginning verse one, all the way through chapter seven, and the sickest verse, chapter 2, verses 1, all the way through chapter 7, uh, verse 60, deals with something that's extremely uh, important because it has to do with the birth and growth of the church. The church was birthed, and then uh, those preceding chapters that follow deals with the growth of the church. Now, tonight's lesson is very important because uh, the first recorded miracle uh, is, is mentioned uh, in connection with this early church. Amen. This is the church's first recorded miracle, and we're in chapter 3, chapter 3. This is the church's very first recorded miracle, chapter 3 of Acts, Acts chapter 3. And it says that Peter and John went up together uh, to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask on from those who entered the temple. Who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms. And verse 4 is extremely important. It says, and fixing his eyes on him with John, uh, Peter said, look at me, uh, look at us. In verse 5, so he gave them his attention, the man that was lame, and expecting to receive something from them. Mm -hmm. And then verse 6 again, extremely important to this text. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. Amen. And it took him by the right hand and lift him and immediately, amen, his, uh, immediately his feet and his ankle bones received strength. And verse 8, so he leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them walking, leaping, and praising God. Verse 8, and all the people saw him walking and praising God. And 10th verse, then they knew that he was he who sat begging alms at the gate, beautiful. Amen. Of the temple and said they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened. This is the church's first recorded miracle. God was now ready, amen, to reach another great harvest of souls. Yeah. If you remember in the preceding chapter, amen, uh, the latter part of that 
uh, the second chapter, uh, 3,000 souls were added to the church. Amen. Amen. And now uh, God was now ready to reach another great harvest of souls. It was now time to attract attention of the people. Yeah. So he reached down and healed a single man. A man who, whom everybody knew and, and filled a man so full of the Holy Spirit that he just went uh, about into the temple with excitement and joy. Such a miracle and behavior, amen, naturally attracts the attentions of the public. Yeah. Now, this miracle was more than just a miracle. It was a sign, it was a demonstration of two things. Yeah. First of all, Jesus is alive. Yeah. His power is just as active upon the earth today as it was when he walked upon the earth. Amen. Second thing, Jesus is now working through his followers. Praise the Lord, his followers. Yeah. Through them, he's reaching out to save and heal the world. His followers are now his instruments, his emissaries, his ambassadors, his representatives, the messengers. His witnesses to the world, amen, to a lost world in suffering and death, sin and shame. We are his witnesses. In this first recorded miracle of the church, God is demonstrating his power and bearing witness through his followers. In so doing, he has given some of the greatest lessons of witnessing to be found in a place. Three things stands out in these 11, chap 11 verses of the third chapter of Acts. First of all, Jesus is now working through his disciples. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Secondly, yeah, that's verses one through five, and then verses 6, 7, and 8 tells us Jesus is alive. His name is still active upon the earth. There's still power in his name. And then finally, he gives us the conclusion in verses 9, 10, 11, which is results of Jesus' power. Now, let's go back and look at uh, this whole ministry piece here. Jesus is now working through his disciples. This is the one thing Jesus wants his followers to know. His presence, his power are still at work, still available to men and women today. His great love and concern for the world is still being manifest through the lives of his disciples. In fact, Jesus has no feet but our feet. No hands but our hands. No voice but our voice. If we do not go and do and speak the word, the work and the word of God, his work does not get done. Amen. Notice four significant things we can learn from this particular section. First, Jesus works through uh, those who are faithful in prayer. That's why we're here tonight. Jesus works uh, through those uh, who are faithful in prayer. We're going to lift that in a minute. It's in this text. Secondly, Jesus works through those who look and see the desperate need of the suffering, both of those who suffer in spirit and in body. Now, how many years had this man been sitting here? Uh, some say over 40 years. Well, that's a long time. Amen, to be carried to the temple waiting for your blessing. We're not told, but no doubt he had been a beggar for years upon, upon years. For everyone knew him, according to verse 10. Uh, it states that then they knew that he was the one sitting at the, at the Cape begging. Picture the man, a helpless cripple, unable to work, being ignored, help me here, with no one to take him in and help. 
without family, poor, having to fend for himself, never fitting in, never being accepted. Amen. He was not even looking up at Peter and John. Amen. Let's see that again. He was not even looking up at Peter and John when he asked for alms in verse 4. Years of having people looking the other way, my God, the other way, had taught him he was different and did not fit in. I want you to see the picture here. Amen. From the first, even as a small child, it probably grown into uh, a spirit of withdrawal. People, a person unable to look people in the eye, he withdrew. The point is simply this. The man was hurting within as well as without. Within and without, he was hurting. He was a living picture of so many in the world today. A person, persons who are wounded, and suffering so much both within and out from neglect of mankind, from an unconcerned and selfish and haunting world, from a world that will not let go and share what it has with those who do not have. He was in a bad situation. But even more critical in this text, Persons who are suffering so much from the neglect of God's people. Amen. He was neglected not by God, but by God's people. Why? Because he was at the gate of the temple every day waiting and begging, but no one helped him. Neglected. He was neglected of God's people. I couldn't help but wonder how many suffering folk, amen, uh, uh, hurting because they're neglected by God's people. Yeah. The very people who profess to know the love and care of God for all, and yet who just act as unconcerned and selfish as if it makes no sense. The need exists. Yeah. Amen. They are all around us. Jesus can work only through the people who see the desperate needs of hurting mankind or humankind. Third thing about this uh, first section is that Jesus works through those who fasten their eyes upon the need. Yeah. Amen. Upon the need. Fasten their eyes upon the need. A person, amen, must stop, fasten his eyes upon the need. The world, the word for fasting his eyes means fixed attention, an earnest, intense gaze, continuous, steadfast attention. It is seeing the need and focusing upon it. It is continuing to focus one's sight, your concern, your attention upon meeting the need until it's met. Notice what Peter did. Peter looked, amen, he looked in that uh, third verse. Peter and John about to go in the temple, the man asked for him, and verse four, and fixing his eyes on him. Yeah. Amen. Peter looked and saw the man need and would not look away. Yeah. Others, all those 40 years, had turned away didn't want to look at the beggar, but Peter and John would not look away. He could have looked away and just passed by the man. Most people did, but not Peter, praise God. He was now indwelt by the Spirit of God, and he was on earth to meet the needs of the world, of the word, world for the Lord. Peter was filled, amen. And when you get filled, with the Spirit of God, then you have a desire to meet the needs of fallen humanity. Therefore, he fastened his attention upon the man, being full of concern and compassion. A thought I want to raise here. The great need of our hour is the needs of the world of the world and to fix our attention upon it. 
Amen. The fourth thing, Jesus worked through those who reach out to meet the need. Amen. He works through those who reaches out to meet the need. Now, now this is important. It's not enough to see the needs of the world. It is not enough to fasten or to look or to gaze upon the needs of the world. Just seeing and being concerned over the needs of the world does not meet that need. My God. Peter did something. Peter act. He went into action. In fact, he did something dramatic. The needs exist. It was there. He knew the Lord cared. He was the representative of the Lord. It was upon him to show how much the Lord cared about the man. Now, note the word, look on us. Look on us. The words were, were filled of authority. They were resting. They caught his attention. They stirred an expectancy within the man to receive something. Now, the words of Peter demonstrate a couple of things. First, he had a sure confidence, say sure confidence, that he himself belonged to God. Talking about Peter, amen. And that he was God's representatives. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, the second thing that Peter demonstrated, he had a plan to help the man. Kind of like that he had a plan. Say so he had a plan. The third thing that Peter demonstrated, he had an expectancy. He expected something to happen. A genuine faith that God would help him to meet the need. Now, Peter wasn't trying to do it on his own. He knew God would help him to meet that need. The fourth thing that Peter demonstrated, he had a willingness to act. My God, say willingness to act. Now, a whole lot of folk are not willing to act. They see the need, but they don't have a spirit of willingness to act. Now, to reach out by faith and meet that need. Now, all this is essential if we are to reach out uh, in the power of God to meet the needs of a dying world. In fact, the needs of the world will be met. It's only as we are confident that we ourselves belong to God. I don't know about you, but I know I belong to God. And that we are his representatives representative upon the earth. It's only as we think and plan how to meet the need. And it's only as we are expectant, believing God will meet that need through us. God uses people. Amen. And it's only as we're willing to act, step out by faith, and meet that need. Yeah. Amen. Acts 20 verse 35 says this. I have showed you all things, how that so laboring you ought to support the weak. I think I need to say that. Acts again. Chapter 20 verse 34. I have showed you all things, how that you so laboring ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, is more blessed to give than to receive. That's a mighty good word. Now, now the second section deals with, with, with prayer, with prayer, with prayer. Amen. Peter and John were faithful prayer warriors. Amen. Remember I said uh, uh, it, it come through prayer. They were prayer warriors. Notice the phrase, amen, in verse, amen, in the first verse, say the ninth hour, which was three o'clock in the afternoon. The Jews had three stated times for prayer. My God. The third hour, which is nine o'clock in the morning. The sixth hour, which is 12 noon. And the ninth hour, which is three o'clock in the afternoon. Now, this is important because the very fact that Peter and John were going into the temple to pray indicates they were men of prayer. Yeah. Say men of, men of prayer. Now, imagine, if you can, Rachel, having three specific times 
of prayer every day. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Not just praying while on the run. Not just praying, amen, always uh, uh, while we go about our daily affairs, amen. But imagine three actual times of prayer, three set periods, yeah. three consecrated times, three prayer sessions. Yeah. They were serious about prayer. Now, when we shut the world out and focus upon God, something happens. That's why they pray three times a day. Such were the prayers of, and life of Peter and John. Such were the reason Jesus was able to work through them. Amen. Because they were men of prayer. And he'll work through us when we turn ourselves and become people of prayer. Amen. Amen. Now, the second thing, the second thing here, amen, uh, that this lesson shows, amen, the first talks about, amen, his presence, but this shows his, his power, his power. Jesus is alive. Yeah. That's what this lesson talks about. Jesus is alive. His presence and power are still active upon the earth. This is the most important thing God wants us to know. His son, Jesus Christ, is alive. Yeah. That's what this miracle was about. He's not dead. Yeah. Right. Having passed from the scene of world history. He, he's alive and exalted to the right hand of the Father forever. His presence and power are still active upon the earth. Now, in this day in which we live, with so much drama and so much uh, uh, killings and so much violence, yeah. you can't help but wonder if it's still active. His name, his presence is still active in the world today through those who are his people who know him yeah. and feel with his Holy Spirit. His power is still available to us. He still loves and still greatly concerned for the world and every person in the world. But three significant facts that we must understand. First of all, Jesus' presence and power are not found in silver and gold. That's right here in verse six. I'm trying to open this up to you, amen. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give in the name of, of Jesus, Christ of Nazareth, and then he said, rise up and walk. Silver and gold, amen, the presence, present power are not found in material things. Peter had no silver or gold. He had no money or material goods, no food or clothing, no housing or shelter, no social or community service. Therefore, Peter could not give those things to the man. But note right here, it was such things that the man wanted and expected. And it was what was uh, the man seemed to need in the eyes of the world. But however, it was not what the man really needed. Help me here. It was not the basic need of the man. The man needed to be changed from inside and without. Yeah. Say inside and out. Now, if he was changed physically and spiritually, he'd be able to walk and be motivated and to provide for himself. Yeah. I'll say that again. i say that again because I think I said something. If he were changed physically and spiritually, he would be able to walk and be motivated to provide for himself. Yeah. Now, when God looked at the man, he saw the man's spiritual need and his physical need. Therefore, God concerned with the cure and changed the man completely from the inside out. Help me somebody. God was out to take care of the whole man and the answer to changing, uh, to change the whole man was not found in silver and gold. Necessities of life are just that. Things, amen, that are necessary to life 
but having the necessity of life are not the basic need of mankind. Man's spiritual welfare is his basic need. I say that again. His, his, his main need, amen. His spiritual welfare is his basic need. If his spirit is right, he's right with God and man. Mm, I said something again. I said, if his spirit is right, he's right with God and man. Now, if his spirit is wrong, he's at odds with God and man. Somebody say amen. Now, if his motivation is strong, he's strong. If his motivation is weak, he's weak. So what God is after the change in the man was making him completely whole so that the man can be productive. The second thing here, Jesus' present power are found in Jesus' name. You have to use his name. It's right here in that sixth verse. Peter said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Now you could apply that to any condition. Rise up and walk. But you got to do it in the name of Jesus. Now Jesus' presence and power are still at work, working miracles, meeting the needs of his people. But note this, Peter reached down to take the man by his right hand and lift him up. That's some awesome faith. The man let him do it. Somebody say amen. He reached down, that's what the Bible says, amen. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Now the man had never got up before. He was always carried. But Peter reached down with his right hand and lift the man up. That's faith. But the man let him do it. He didn't stop and he said, man, I can't walk. I'm crippled, I can't move, but but he let him do it. That's trust. Help me somebody. I said he lift him by his right hand, amen, and lifted him, that's faith. But the man let him do it, that's trust. But the third fact is Jesus healed him, that's power. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. How much uh, we need to trust Jesus tonight? His presence, his power, how much we need to quit questioning and arguing over whether or not we still have the right to call upon Jesus' name, over whether or not we can still trust his presence and his power. It's time to trust Jesus, to believe him, his love and care for suffering and lost souls of the world. It is time to go forth in the full presence and power of the Lord. Yeah. who is alive, whose presence and power are still available. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 17, verse 20, Verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, and you shall say unto this mountain, remove to, to yonder place, and it shall remove. And nothing shall be impossible to you. Amen. Here's a man, here the man was completely changed his, his whole being, his whole attitude, and his whole life. Amen. Not just his physical, but his spiritual life will change. He will no longer, amen, uh, look down upon. He was he was saved and healed and inside and out. His whole personality changed, and he wanted all to know that it was the name of Jesus. If you call on the name of Jesus, things will change in your life. Amen. The person's name stands for all that a person is. Amen. That's why you call on his name. For example, a king may sign, send a decree throughout his kingdom. The decree goes out under his name, under his authority. Secondly, a government or business official may send, amen, a memo throughout the various departments. The memo goes out under the name and authority of the person in charge. 
But when Peter said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk, he was proclaiming something, Caleb. It is the name, the power, the authority, the person of Jesus who will heal you. Jesus Christ is alive. His power, his authority, his name, amen. His person is still active. Yeah. Note here, I'm almost through. Three critical facts about the name of Jesus. Amen. It is a name or the power of Jesus that meets every need. Yeah. Praise his name. It is not, amen, it's not uh, Peter, it's not silver, it's not gold. Amen. Neither can you find it in, in bringing health. It's not, it's not permanent. Amen. Ill health or disease and accidents eventually catch all of us. And when it does, so no amount of money is of any help. It is Christ alone, his name, his presence, and his power that meets the need. Yeah. The second thing, Peter knew that the power of Jesus' name dwelt within Christ himself and only in Christ. He didn't have to lie upon a committee. He didn't have to lie upon a board. He didn't have to lie upon him and some executives. It was in his name. But he also knew that he possessed the, the, the presence and the power of Christ within his body. Yeah. That's what Peter knew. Amen. He knew he had the same power in him yeah. because it was transferred to him on, on, on Pentecost. Yeah. But he also knew, amen, that, that if you just call his name yeah. as a representative, something will happen. Yeah. Note what Peter said. Such as I have given unto you. He had the presence and the power of Jesus. It was that which he could give. In fact, it was that that was every purpose for being on earth, to represent Christ. And I'm here to represent Christ. What about you? What about you? What about you? Tell somebody I'm here to represent Christ. Third thing, Peter act first, not to man. The man didn't reach out to Peter. Peter reached down to him. Praise the Lord. Why? Because Peter was the Lord's representative. That's good news. Jesus had no way to reach the man. He had already ascended into heaven. So Jesus had no body, no hands, no feet, no voice left upon the earth except those of the men and women whom he had left behind. Help me somebody. We are his body. We are his eyes. We are his hands. We are his feet. We are left here as his representative to speak life into a dying world. In other words, if any act of work was to be done for God, they had to do it. That's right. Help me somebody. If only what they did would get done. The same is true of us. Just think of the awesome truth we have. We are the ones who must act and take the step of faith. Amen. Let me help somebody. If only what we do, it would be done. If any act of work could be done, God works through us. Help me somebody. Matthew chapter 20, verse 28. Even as the Son of Man came to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life as a ransom for others. We ought to give ourselves for others. But then finally come uh, the conclusion of the results of the prayer. It starts out verse 1, they were going to prayer. But verse 11 closes with the results of the prayer. Ought to be some results of the prayer. Say results of the prayer. And results were twofold in that ninth, 10th, and 11th verse. First thing, the people knew the man had been truly healed. Did y'all catch that? They knew he had been healed. They knew a change took place. They had seen the man for years sat and crippled and begging for help. There could be no question about the miracle. Praise our God. And they and they were filled. The Bible said they were filled uh, with wonder and amazement at the change. 
My God, my God, wouldn't it be grand if the world around us could be in wonder and amazement at the change that's happening in somebody's life. Amen. Amen. At that which had happened unto him. And they were attracted. They were attracted. They were attracted because of what happened to the man at the gate of the temple. They were drawn to Christ because of what they saw happen to the man. His life became a witness. I want my life to be a witness. They were attracted wondering and waiting to see what had caused such a change. A changed person, a person who is truly changed by Christ, he will also stand in amazement and wonder. A changed person will stir people to desire the same miracle in their own lives. Amen, somebody. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, let your light do what shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which in heaven. The world ought to be able to see a change in us. And verse 10 said, then they knew it was he who sat at the gate. Amen. And they were filled with amazement and a wonder what had happened. Help me somebody. And then later it talks about the man went into the temple healed and praising God. When God changed your life, you go to the temple, you go to the church, you go to the house of prayer, and you worship and praise the living God. Somebody say amen. amen. The church was the church of action after Pentecost. Yes. And we need to be a church of action in this last day. Lord, I thank you tonight. I thank you for your people. I thank you for this word. I thank you for this revelation. I thank you for the insight. I thank you for breathing on us tonight. And I pray God just speak to each person who here in this building with me. And then Lord speak to those who who on this, this social media platform. Wherever they are, where they are, speak to them. And let them know God have no hands but our hands. God have no feet but our feet. No eyes but our eyes. No voice but our voice. And no body but ours. It's our responsibility as people of prayer and faith to represent the kingdom of God and tell a dying world in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Lord, show the world that, that they can be amazed at the change that you're even working in our lives and around others. Touch somebody tonight. Change their mindset, Lord. Change them from the inside outside. Redirect our paths. Redirect our goals. Redirect, oh God, our aspirations and, and make us all you want us to be. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. Amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. We pray that these words will encourage your heart. Sunday morning at 11 o'clock, I'm going to deal with a very unusual subject. Two words, two words, two words. And we're going to break down those two words. I'm not going to tell you what they are. I want you to just pray about it. I'm going to break down two words, and we're going to uh, exegese one verse that explains these two words of major importance that we often overlook. God bless you. See you Sunday at 11 o'clock.